I'm Tyler Weingarner for Cool Tools, and today I want to show you how to build your new favorite piece of shop furniture, and it comes from the world of filmmaking. You can't store apples in an apple box, but there's still plenty of ways to use them. You can stand on them, use them as a stool, support heavy objects, and more. They're closed on all sides and have handles cut into them so they can be carried easily but will rest flat on the ground on any side. Apple boxes come in a few different sizes. A full apple measures 20 inches by 12 inches by 8 inches. And then half apples are just 4 inches on their shortest side, quarter apples are 2 inches, and pancakes are just 1 inch. Today we're going to be making a full apple. To make the box, we're going to be using a 2 foot by 4 foot panel of half inch plywood. Good plywood has been tough to come by lately, so I'm using this lower grade today. But if you can, use Baltic birch. To get all the panels we need, I'm mostly going to be doing cross cuts on my table saw. We need to get two 12 by 20 inch panels, two 7 by 20 inch panels, and two 7 by 11 inch panels. You can find a cut list down in the show notes. Next, I'm going to cut the handles into the two smallest panels that will become the end caps of the box. Because I can, I'm going to use my CNC router to do that. But you don't need to be that fancy. All you need are a pair of slots that are 1.25 inches wide and 4 to 5 inches long. You could just as easily do this with a forstner or a spade bit to make the holes and then connect them using a jigsaw. With the handles made, we can start our assembly. To keep my glue up a little simpler, I'm just going to assemble the perimeter of the box before attaching the top and bottom. Use a speed square or 1-2-3 block to check for the square as you go. Once that glue dries, you can attach the top and bottom panels, then let that glue dry. Instead of relying on just the glue to keep the box together, I'm going to add some dowels. I like the look of having exposed dowels, so it's fine we're adding them after the glue up. To help keep the drill straight, I'm using this simple dowel jig from PowerTech. The clear panel helps me line up my markings, and there's plenty of clamping area to keep it steady. I'll leave a link for it down in the show notes. With the holes drilled, I can add some glue and then drive the dowel in, then trim them flush. I'm adding two dowels to each edge of the top and bottom panels, and two more to the sides of each of the end panels. The last few steps are all about finishing. I'm using this small roundover bit to break the edges and then giving it a quick sanding up to 220 grit. Just be careful with the power sander on the sides. You don't want to wear through the veneers. Finally, be sure to label it before giving it a few coats of your favorite protective finish. Now you've got a sturdy and practical piece of shop furniture. Whether you need a few more inches to reach up to a high shelf, an impromptu seat, or a temporary tool stand. For more tools, tips, and other recommendations like these, check out cool-tools.org.